morning. All right. Good morning, world. How's everybody doing? It's Wednesday, hump day, if you're keeping up with all your days. And I still don't really know who all is uh, sheltering in place and, and all of that. Um, I'd love to know if you're working or what's going on in, in that area and, and society and all of that where you are. Um, so for me, I'm still going at it. Uh, I work in the city and um, we're you know, I'm there every morning. I'm there till the afternoon. And, and so we're busy uh, doing that. And uh, hope, you're, hope your day's well. Um, I'm, I, I think Friday, this is just kind of local news here, but uh, we have to start wearing masks in the city, supposedly. Uh, that's the rule. And uh, so we'll see how all this plays out. Uh, and that's what's going on in, you know, where, where we are. Um, I'm, but I'm, I'm hard at it. I don't get to slow down much. I, we are staying home, uh, other than when, you know, the Tampshire makes me run to Home Depot or wherever to get stuff for, you know, what we're doing around here. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. Uh, I had a five o'clock meeting this morning with uh, some, a friend over in, in uh, England. And so we're just doing work like that. And that's kind of that's kind of where we are. I hope you're doing well. Um, and I hope everything's everything's good in your world. And let's just breathe a little bit. Uh, the God of all creation, God Most High, is in charge of everything going on so uh for right now we're just looking at kind of getting our daily dose and uh, man i so enjoy having having those of you that jump on jump on and those who watch later jump in here i, I love the feedback the encouragement it's life to me to be able to to speak truth one to hear it and and ingest it and then to speak it and absolutely love what's going on in in this little community that we're building here in our uh daily dose uh tribe so to speak and um uh, Anyway, that's kind of where we are. So we're looking um, at the book of Ephesians and, and just kind of walking through some things very practically, not doing an exhaustive study in a sense, although we're looking at almost every verse. But uh, we're looking at what it means to be a true Christ follower and the attitudes that, that every, uh, every believer ought to have. And then looked at behavioral shifts. <clears throat> then we have transitioned. So the book has some transitions in it. And, and each one has a different movement. One, it started with attitudes, then it went to behavior. And then we shifted gears. That last behavior, or one of the last ones, dealt with being filled with the Spirit. That's the key to everything. If you're a Christ follower, you can't move spiritually. You can't move forward without the Holy Spirit having control of your life. Sure, you can be a little more moral and you can you can kind of bend in and blend into the society, but you'll never have the power that you you should have to defeat sin in your life, to really thrive and to become someone who is a force uh, of, of, for Christ in this world. You can't be that. And so we're looking practically at what that what that looks like and, and how it goes. And so I want to I want to back up. Yesterday we backed up just a little bit to see how. Uh, why, why relationships struggle, and uh, then we're, we're moving into marriage, and then we're going to move into parenting, and then we're moving into uh, the marketplace. That's kind of how the scriptures flow. So today, I kind of want to do just a real quick review on some of these uh, aspects of marriage, and talk a little bit about marriage. Now, I realize some of you aren't married, and that's fine. I'm, this isn't, you know, you, you can pass this on, or, or whatever you want to do with it, but we're just kind of working through these issues of how the Holy Spirit affects relationships. This is the whole point. So, to be filled with the Spirit, which we looked at, uh, is the result of that, the result of, of emptying myself, of, of considering my, my old self dead and alive to God and, can, and and then letting Him, I'm drinking in truth every day, uh, I'm listening to Him, I'm praying uh, to God, I'm listening to the Spirit. There's this growth that happens, this uh, this, uh, it's, it's like when you work out and you keep doing it and doing it, you're getting stronger, uh, you're, you're, getting, you're getting tougher. All of those things are happening. That's what happens is the Holy Spirit invades our life and we constantly are drinking of it. We're changing even though we can't really see it, maybe. The world is beginning to take notice. So what is the result of that? Well, the result of being filled with the Spirit is that I'm not focused on myself. That's what we looked at yesterday in the garden where... They were naked and not ashamed because their focus was on their, their mate. And then sin entered the picture. They began to look down and focused on themselves. They knew their nakedness. And then they hid themselves, right? They began to hide their flaws. And then they began to hurl accusation, make everything about the other person. That's, that's the toxic environment that sin does in, in, in life. So the result of being filled with the Spirit 
is, is to not be focused on self anymore. Our eyes now are lifted and we're focused on someone else. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm focused in that way. Now, to submit, and this is the word. This is when you and I are filled with the Holy Spirit, submission is a natural flow in our life. Now, we hear that word and we think all kinds of change and bondage and everything else, but it's really not that. It's one of the most freeing things that, that we can do. To, to, to submit is a military term, and we looked at that two days ago. Hupatasso, it means to line up under. It means practically, if I could, without getting exhaustive about the military use of it and all of those things. From a scriptural perspective, it simply means that I'm, I, am, I am choosing to elevate your needs above my own. And I'm asking, how can I serve you? Can you imagine what it's like? in a society where there are Christ followers and that's what they're asking. How can I help you? How can I serve you? You see that if you go to a healthy church or you have a healthy small group, you see that, don't you? Where everybody's kind of seeking to help each other. And as we do that, we all grow and all of our needs are met. And there's, there's, there's what they call equality in, in this thing. <clears throat> so that's where he's going. And that's what he says in Ephesians 5.21. Therefore, because of the Holy Spirit, he says, submit one to another. Now, that's the term we're looking at. Notice he doesn't say, because the pastors love to jump on the, the verse just below that uh, and say, you know, wives submit to your husbands. Well, really it's a mutual deal. He's showing us how wives submit to their husbands, and then he's going to show how husbands submit to their wives. And so before we jump into that, uh, which we're going to do tomorrow, actually I'm going to spend two days on, on wives, Thursday and Friday, and then I'm going to spend equal amount of time on the guys, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but, but what I want to do is talk about marriage for just a minute. Because it's broken. It's broken in our culture, right? I mean, it's, and it, it, I wish it was just limited to the, to the, to the culture. But, but it's broken in the church, too. And the reason is because we have downplayed the role of the Holy Spirit. We have elevated ourselves because culture does that. Live your best life now. And, and all of those books that, that are designed to, to make everything about self-help. And I'm telling you, that's a wrong road to go down. And, and I, I know you want to argue with me about all that, and that's fine. I don't want to have an argument with you. I'm just telling you, just study the Scriptures. You're going to find that's a road you don't want to go down. The best life is the life when we selflessly serve others. It's Proverbs 11, 25. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. It's a reciprocal deal. If I take care of you, God takes care of me. It's a win-win for everybody. And so in marriage, this is what's wrong. We don't do that. And, and I don't know how much environment and culture has played a part in that. I just know that right now in my own life, I've got two friends, both of them, their marriages are, are somewhat collapsing, and, and, and it's a sad thing to, to watch. And so you have to ask yourself, how does that happen? How do people who claim to be Christ followers get, get to that place? Now, if you've been there, I realize you've got a lot of excuses and reasons, and I'm not, I'm not diminishing those. We can find a lot of reasons uh, to, to see a marriage fail, but, but God never designed it that way. Marriage should be incredible. It, it should be absolutely incredible. I mean, off the chart incredible. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, Pardue, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I've been at this thing for about 40 years. 40 years. The Tamster and I met, I immediately when I saw her, I knew I was going to marry. In fact, I told all my buddies in high school, I'm going to marry that girl right there. It took me a little bit of time, uh, you know, okay, a lot of time to convince the Tamster that I'm, I was actually all that and I was the guy that she should marry. But when we got married, we both grew up, I'm drinking out of my Paris cup kind of as, as a marriage deal. Oh, that's a whole other story. Um, but, but we've been at this thing for a long time. Now, 40 years, 40 years we've been walking together. Uh, and, and in those 40 years, I can't think of a time where either of us yelled at the other one. Now, there were times when we may have had disagreement and other things, and we may have struggled here and there with certain things. But for the most part, there's been none of that. Um, and, and, and you, you got to ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, one, because the Tamster's a really, really good girl, and she's very patient with me. Uh, but I would suggest that a lot of it is that we genuinely, deeply love each other, and we love the Lord. And so I'm going to say something really stupid, and she, instead of going off on me, is going to kind of back down a little bit. And she's going to do some things that can kind of just frustrate here and there, 
and, and I have a choice of whether I'm going to just snap at her and, and treat her like she's a child and say, grow up or whatever it is, you know, or, or I can just breathe a little bit. And, and, and so we call this thing, the relationship that happens in a marriage is, is what we call perfectly imperfect, right? I mean, listen, when you think about it, the person that you're married to, you love a lot about them or you wouldn't have married them. Uh, now, there are certain things that begin to nag and irritate. They tend to surface to the top, right? Squeaky wheel kind of thing. And all of a sudden you go, all you can see is the one flaw. If you can ever arrest your mindset away from that and look at all of the good stuff and let the 20% that you don't like, at that 80-20 rule if we were to apply it, you're going to see your whole marriage begin to elevate. If both of you would get on that same page and do that. Now, let me just kind of remind you about what marriage is. The scripture says, when God made man and woman, he says, for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father, cling to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. There is this concept of this unity. And he says, the scripture goes on to say, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Now, some of you might disagree, but, but that's what the scripture says. And there's something powerful about having a, a help meet. That's what the scripture says that my wife is to me. She's my help meet. In a sense, we could say that she completes me. There's a lot in that word, help me. Uh, but, but I think really what that means is that we complete each other. Tammy's different than I am. My personality is a little more outgoing and, and extroverted, and, and I'm much more of a, a risk taker, and, and she's a little more slow and steady in, in that sense. But there's something about our life. She's helped us avoid a lot of stupid, foolish things that I would have gotten into. And we've had a lot more fun because she followed me down these crazy trails. So there's this mutual thing. There's a completion that takes place. You've got to see that in your marriage. Now, the second thing is that there's something powerful about a partnership, right? Two are better than one. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4.9. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. Man, there are times when I'm crawling in here and I'm just frustrated with life. And it's amazing how just being with Tammy can, can really lift my spirits. And the same with her. We give each other perspective. When one falls in, a, in an emotional way or, or whatever way, there's someone to lift them up. But woe to the one who falls and there's not another one to lift him up, uh, Solomon says. Furthermore, if two lie down and keep warm, but how can warm be, be, how can one be warm alone? There's something about just that warmth that happens in having a partner in life that you know has your back. This, this, is, this, is, the, this is so powerful. And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. I love the fact that, uh, that I never worry that Tammy's going to talk bad about me. Now, she may not let me know, but I'm, for the most part, I'm pretty sure she's got my back. I can be doing the stupidest thing in the world. If somebody says something about it, you better watch out because that my, my short little Tamster wife, she'll come at you. And, and that's because we have a partnership. This is what marriage is all about. And the, the, the third component of this is what, uh, what Solomon also said in Solomon 6.3. I am my lover's and my lover is mine. There's this romantic, intimate. There is nothing like knowing and being known fully. This is what the scriptures speak of when it comes to marriage. Now, this can only thrive where the Holy Spirit's in power. That can only happen there. I mean, you can have longevity in a marriage. I've, I had friends, long, long life. Uh, of marriage, yet they had separate bedrooms. They were just roommates. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you were slap out in love with each other and love being together, that, that you, you love that whole partnership, that life thing. I'm talking about being in love, right? Not just love, not just, okay, well, I love her. No, no, I'm in love with her. This is, this is what he's calling us to. But a, a truly passionate partnership like that, only happens if you consistently submit to one another. This is where we're going. So we're going to go tomorrow. I'm setting you up because I'm going to say some things tomorrow and some of you women are going to be mad at me. Um, but, but it's important that we understand that. Let me, let me uh, read for you the passage we're, that we are looking at so that you'll see this. Wives, be subject to your husbands. That is, line up under your husband. As to the Lord, in the same way that you would do so with the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. I know, hang on, we're going to get to that later. As Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church subjects themselves to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Then he says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. How do we submit to our wives? By loving her as Christ does. That's what it means. 
and gave himself up for it. So there was sacrifice involved. So that he might sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing in the water with the word. There was this purity. She was, she's more, we're more pure because of Christ. The, the wife should be a little more pure because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to filter all the crud out in that sense. And then he says, they have no spot or wrinkle, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. So that's the truth of the scriptures. This is what we're looking at, and this is where we're going. And when we think about bringing the Holy Spirit into our marriage, it's a game changer. Because we're simply asking ourselves this question. If, if every day I walk in and go, hey, Tam, what can I do to serve? If I think that, what can I do to serve her today? And she does for me, totally amazing game changer for your marriage. So that's the, that's the topic. That's what I wanted to share with you today. If you're married, man, I really want you to just to think about this over the, over the, 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 the next day, you know, just as you're going about and thinking, what can I do to serve my mate? It's going to be a game changer. So tomorrow we're going to jump into what does it look like for a wife to submit to her husband very practically. I'm glad you stopped in today and let me share this stuff with you. I hope you guys have a great day. Listen, keep your head up and keep going and moving on. Be a blessing to somebody today. And I will see you tomorrow.